Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, the Fuzz is here. And today, in this Spellweaver talk, we're gonna cover another aspect that is basically popularly believed to be basically broken. Now, this video has been inspired in part by Jodo's latest video about the kind of changes you would like to see in the game, where he basically spelled out that, hey, the minion is kind of broken. But also about a recent forum post, which was asking for some changes on the cards. Now, my opinion of this aspect is that it's it's really cool, but there's no doubt there are a few cards that are probably just a little bit too powerful, and not all of them are immediately obvious. The strange thing here is that there's actually an entire underlining theme here that, that basically just does, doesn't ever see any light of day because it's not very good compared to the other things you can have. So what am I talking about? We got Power Surge, get a Mana Crystal. So basically a ramp, right? Moon Priestess? Oh, you have one more mana this turn, okay. Word of Power? Oh, you get a lot of mana. So this deck likes to get a lot of mana. And in fact, if you look at other cards such as Power Seeker, it seems like the developers were trying to put in this idea of try to get these ridiculous amounts of mana and then try to do something with them, right? Now, they did not entirely succeed on the do something with it part because Power Seeker is not very good, mostly because anytime you're not powering him up, he's just a 0-1, and so he's just very easy to kill. And without some way to use this mana, the whole thing just becomes kind of pointless. Yeah, you could use Power Surge for Ramp, but New Horizons is better. You can use Moon Priestess, but New Horizons is better. I guess Moon Priestess is okay, but even if you're ramping, what are you ramping towards? Now, what about the other cards? Now, the cards that are most commonly uh, mentioned when you think about Dominion being overpowered are Lord Karthus, the Game Breaker. I've already stated many times my opinion on this card. I think it's overpowered. I still think it's overpowered. I'm gonna think it's overpowered because all these effects combined with the body is just a little bit too good. And of the main issue is that he basically limits design space on future legendaries being able to kill any of them immediately until unless until we get some kind of legendary that you know if it dies something good happens and i think bezerok of all things is actually an interesting counter to, to karthus because well if you pop bezerok you might spawn a couple spawn a couple more demons but other than that it's just it's just the best legendary you can get takes care of any threat and other cards cataclysm has already been a hot topic also just clears the entire board the fact that it's two Dominion doesn't really matter because you'll often just use uh, Ob Obelisk of Unity. Or you'll just have two Dominion aspects anyways. And clearing the board just kind of kind of kills the interactivity of the game because all the creatures that were there, all the time you spent building it up, they're just all gone instantly. But then there's the other side of the argument that, well, if without it, we don't have any board wipes at all. And there should be some kind of a board wipe in the game. So this one's going to be tough. I don't know what's going to happen. There's a few other cards that were mentioned in the forum post. Bloodwill Matriarch is a very interesting card. It's popped up here and there in the decks. And what the, what the, the forum post was saying is that this should cost 3 mana and, you know, 3 aspects. And the funny thing is, this is, this is one of those cards I consider to be sleepers. That is, cards that maybe aren't all that popular now, but could easily become dominant if the current champions, you know, Karthus and all the other control stuff, weren't around. Because if you look at this card, okay, the body isn't great, but the effect is really, really good. Because you can use the uh, energy immediately, so you could take a Fireball, you could take an Assassinate, you could take Splitting Headaches or whatever, and just get immediate value. And the fact that it has four health means it's, it's you know, hard to kill immediately. So do I agree with that change? I don't think it's necessary now, but it may be if Blood Will Matriarch ever comes out. And I think it, it eventually will, because it's it's pretty good. And also the Cathedral of the Night. I've even mentioned it several times in previous videos. One suggestion that uh, I saw was just make this give minus 1-1 one, one instead. And that probably would be enough to, to, to fix that. And even just sell into slavery. I don't like the idea of this being able to sack a creature every turn for zero mana. But basically, 
what do we have here? We have an aspect with several really, really strong cards that dominate the, the control meta, and a lot of other cards that just can't be used because they need more components. And, you know, a couple sleeper cards as well. Do I think it's overpowered? Not really. It's just that the, the, the cards we just discussed are overpowered, and they, they're just too decisive on the meta. Something about them has to, has to change. Now, what about the actual hero, though? Now, what about our good friend, Lady Despina? Do I think she's overpowered? Not really, but then again, I, the main issue I think here is just with the cards that she has to work with, particularly Karthas, actually, because stealing a Karthas allows you to just instantly take care of anything on the board without even using cards, and so that makes playing anything kind of bad, because your opponent can just kill it with your Karthas. But that's not even the stupidest thing. The worst thing is that if your opponent steals your Karthas when you have one of your own on the board, your Karthas gets killed because you're now considered to have two legendaries, and then his Karthas, i.e. your Karthas, gets another kill in addition to that. And then you could do the same thing to your opponent, steal his Karthas to kill that Karthas to get rid of it, and then it's, it's a mess. The legend rule really needs to be fixed to just, you cannot control two of the same legendary. I don't care who owns them, you just can't control them. Just takes care of the shenanigans right away. Now as for the ability itself, I kind of like it. I think it is somewhat of a countermeasure, a checks and balances system if you will. Because of the fact that it can get anything out, it can serve to you know, counter any deck that you might run across. No matter what kind of ridiculous creatures your opponent might be running, you can use them against him. That said, I do not like the idea of stealing creatures as powerful as Antriel or Red Dragon. Because that's, that's just kind of lame, especially since it costs you nothing to do. But then, I'm not just here to complain about the ability, I'm here to offer a solution. So my solution is the following. Keep the cost as it is, but you can only steal a creature whose level is 2 or less. That way you don't get to steal the most ridiculous stuff. You don't get to take your opponent's big legendaries or dragons or even Mescation Phoenixes or anything like that. It's just a, also limits the versatility of the skill a little bit. Now here's a second idea that I had. A little bit crazier, but I think it's pretty amusing. How about, rather than steal creatures, we steal spells. So it would work exactly the same way. You would pay the amount of mana equal to the level and cost of the spell that you want to steal. So let's say for Cataclysm, it would be six. So you would pay seven. You look at your opponent's deck and you take the Cataclysm. Well, you would only look at the valid targets, right? So you might not even see anything if they don't have a Cataclysm. And because of that, it would still be pretty versatile because, you know, every deck has some kind of spells. And maybe it could even be made a little bit cheaper because, you know, stealing spells is just not quite as effective as stealing creatures. Maybe make it two aspects? Although, I don't know. That might need some playtesting, assuming it'll even be considered as an idea. By the way, anytime I suggest anything, feel free to let me know how you feel about it in the comments, especially if you think it's a ridiculously stupid idea. Because I'm bound to come up with something ridiculously stupid now and then. But to summarize my opinions of Dominion, the aspect does need some change. We gotta do something about mostly Karthas. Cataclysm, maybe, and something about the hero pose. They just break this, this, this stupid lock that it has on the game. This being considered the best deck, you know, it shouldn't be as good as it is. Jaro even mentioned that he's won, like, He's won games for days on end with this deck when playing on ladder, and that probably shouldn't be the case. So what's going to happen? I don't know. I do hope something happens. I do hope developers take a look at it and realize that, man, this, this deck is doing a little bit too well. All these things combined make up for just an unfun experience. If you ever run up against this deck and you don't have... You're not either aggro to rush them down, or you don't have a, your own control deck that can deal with it, you're gonna have a very bad time. Oh well. Now there's one one other thing I want to throw in this discussion. And that's, uh, where is it? Where's this card? Word of Grace. Now, I saw 
another post regarding this card saying that it's just that it's broken actually Johto himself said that this card needs to leave the game I do not agree with that statement I know that it's that the one turn heal is kind of lame but let's let's face it what exactly makes one turn heal what it is yes this card is the actual trigger you play this with like six aspects gain 12 life and then you use Thalmic Reflector or something, right? To get another 12. But the thing is, is that Word of Grace's fault? I mean, without Obelisk of Unity, you wouldn't really be able to do that. Without Thalmic Reflector, you would be able to do that. Now, let's leave Thalmic Reflector alone. That's a really cool card. That's just... A, Word of Grace is just another casualty of Obelisk of Unity being what it is. The words... All the word cards... They work off of your aspects. The more aspects you have, the more powerful they are. They are supposed to encourage playing mono aspects so that they become more powerful. So with this, if you have four aspects, you can get a bunch of life. Same thing with the um, Word of Fire. You play this, if you have four aspects, for instance, you do four damage. That takes care of just about anything, and you get to draw a card, which is really nice. But then if you only play with one aspect, eh, it's just kind of meh. But that's how it's supposed to work. It's a, it's a card that could be really strong if you focus on the aspect, but otherwise it's just kind of, you know, it's it's decent but not great. Uh, so that's how I feel about this card. I don't think it's overpowered at all. Now what about the fact that the win condition for getting 40 life is a little bit uninteractive? It, it leads to these games where your opponent is just doing his thing and, you know, just slowing you down, stopping you, and then gaining life, and then he wins, and you feel like you, you just played a game of solitaire. Trust me, I know how annoying that is. It, it reminds me of uh, freaking Freeze Mage from Hearthstone, a deck which I most certainly did not enjoy playing against, because it did exactly the same thing. Stall, defense, stall, defense, sudden win condition. Pretty lame. That said, I do like the 40 life win condition. I think it's very cool. The fact that you can win by doing 20 damage or by gaining 20 life. I think it's in the game to basically cut short the games where one side has such an overwhelming life advantage they probably could never lose. That said, I do think there should be a change. And here's what I propose. Rather than you winning the game the moment you hit 40 life, this condition waits until the start of your next turn. If at the start of your turn, you have 40 life, you win the game. If you gain 40 life, you know, during your turn, that means you'll have to wait and your opponent will have a chance to, you know, to, to do something about it, to try to put you back down. Now, this card is an instant, so you could, you know, get to, get to 38 and then at the end of your opponent's turn, use it and then heal yourself. But then again, that you could do that now, so that wouldn't change anything. It would still be a thing, but at least you could get rid of some of the frustration by giving the opposing player a chance to deal with your increasing life supply. Those are my two cents on, on this card, on life gain in general. I'm not really going to talk about stuff like, like angels and other things that Jota mentioned. You should definitely check out his video. It's very interesting. It got me off my ass to do this one. I'll link it in the description. I'll also link the forum post to the Dominion aspect, the one that just recently popped up. Anyways, let me know what you think. Is there anything else you'd like me to talk about? Leave a comment, subscribe, like, whatever you wish. And I will see you guys in the next video.